tidy ho, wet bar club. <sighs> My post apocalyptic board is boring. I have all those nice scattered terrains and I made a play mat and I played on it like three times and now it's boring. That's the curse of the terrain maker. It's boring. So I need to make new terrain. <sighs> I got an idea for quick and easy adjustment. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it is really quick and easy. So here is what we have right now. For most of those thingies, there is a video. Hmm, we could use some elevation, maybe some blocks. I got this old styrofoam. It's pretty beaten up with holes and scratch marks and dirt. It's two inches high. Let's draw some basic shapes on it with a crayon. And then cut, 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 cut. I got the mask on because of the fumes. You see the fumes? So now this is uh, cutting a ramp with maximum precision, free-handed. Precision again. Precision. See that? See how I look? Precision. Pre precision. I like cardboard as the base material for concrete because it has those stripes. And I'll cut out a little bit more than two inches. So that's instead of five centimeters, it's 5.3 centimeters. So I have a little bit of a lip standing above the block. You will see why I do that later. Some blocks will get some battle damage. Don't think, just do. Let's glue those cardboard thingies to the sides. I'm using construction adhesive. PVA takes too long. I want to build it fast. And it does not reactivate when I put wet stuff on it. Wet and wild, wet, wet, wet and wild. Let's test it. I instantly love it for the gaming table as I have some line of sight blockers and some elevation. So this uh, is a really beaten up styrofoam. It had the holes in it before I started to work. And that gave me the idea that could be some exposed areas where you can see wires, cables, pipes and stuff. I just, just ram it in, in there. And then I will also use my laboratory tubes from plastic. I'm using them in all the sci-fi builds. I will paint them later in the nasty neon, neon yellow so it fits to the rest of the table. Yeah, also broke some of those plastic tubes. I hope nobody cuts uh, himself, herself while playing. The blood will mess up my paint job, I guess. Some more wires. I'm covering everything in a really diluted plaster sand PVA mix. It's really wet, so it's more like paint and not like plaster. I'm using a brush. Yeah, that's a fast way. <laughs> I mixed a uh, uh, concrete gray. It's just about 50% black, 50% white water. That's it, acrylic paint only on the cardboard because that will be my concrete. So here I got two inks, regular yellow and a neon yellow and some water. And I'm filling up the tubes from the inside with the color, then just let it dry. I want to make some tar again. I need fine sift earth. So I took some earth from the garden there's a lot of stones and small thingies in there. And then I use a rough sieve first and then a finer sieve later, like now. <laughs> I found that method when I was doing the elevated highway. So it's fine sift earth, a lot of PVA, 
no water and some acrylic paint. I'm going for a dark, 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 dark gray, almost black. So it's a lot of black and a little bit of white. It's a nasty paste and it's drying really slowly. So you have time to move it around. The layer is about two to three millimeters thick. So I get uh, a funny reaction when it dries. It crackles. I'm putting some watered down black as a black wash on the concrete sides. So oh, let's see the crackles. It's, I love it. It's perfect for old tar roads. So I'm putting in those yellow painted plastic tubes. Those are for my mutants. I have this theme of the neon yellow pipes. I guess uh, they are mutants because of that stuff that's everywhere. And now they need it. Every object, every building, every vehicle has this poison flowing. Maybe they got it flowing through the veins also. Some more PVA. I want to blend in those uh, edges of the of the tubes. Doesn't look good right there. I want that it looks like they're coming out of the road. So just sticking in some stones, some sand, some chipped off paint from an old bucket. I have collecting it there and just using it randomly. No science, just some glue and some chaotic putting it on there. Spraying it with some watered down PVA to seal it all in. Next up is the green phase. Using some watered down PVA where I want uh, homemade flock to stick. The sawdust flock, there's also a video on that. Here I'm using, I think it's two or three different green tones. Also just randomly putting it on there. It does not matter. There will be more layers and layers of overgrowth on there. So it does not matter. Don't overthink this step. Next up is a fine foam flock. I use those two colors, this nasty light green and also a little bit of a darker green to get some variations. This is a cool contrast, this light green on the black tar. I like it. I did not like the lips. Uh, there was this cardboard structure th shining through. So I mixed up some plaster, already added in some black and white, mostly black, um, to get this medium gray. That's 50-50 black and white. And then put it on and scraped it off where it ran down. I want to remain the shape uh, of that lip, but I don't want to see the inside of the cardboard anymore. Yeah, so you could say, why didn't you do that before? I didn't think about it. It did not, I, I did not see it before. So I have to adjust it now. It's also cool that I'm doing it now after all the washes and the green. And so I'm adding a new layer of texture on top of the existing color and texture, especially when I scrape off the sides. It's extra work, but it's definitely worth it. Sometimes you have to revisit stuff. So now here the lip is sealed from the top. That looks better. And here are the scrape marks. I could not paint it like that. It's a really nice effect. I don't like the color of the lip on top, so I blend it in with a light black wash. Now, uh, of course, everything is wet again because of the because of the wash, and I want to continue to work on it. So, uh, yeah, let's blow dry everything. <laughs> so, what is this white stuff? It is regular PVA, stippled on with a nasty old brush for. The first coat of dead short grass, static grass. Beige, light brown, whatever you want to call it. So after the first layer is dry, I have some more PVA on there, but only in small spots for a second layer of static grass in a dirty green. 
to give it a little bit more variation, I sprinkle on some really fine sift homemade sawdust flock in two colors. Yeah, and to get off the excess, after sealing it in, I'll use the vacuum cleaner. It also helps to stand up the static grass a little bit more. I don't know why I do this. <laughs> but I, I somehow hate it and I somehow love it. It's 12 millimeter and set tufts. And as always, in the end, I'll scratch on some soft pastels for decent color accents here and there. Browns and greens and uh, yellow. Ah, and uh, this time I bought a bucket of this brown pigment powder and I'm stippling it on with a brush. So this is all my sci-fi stuff I got so far. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I like it. But I guess there will be more in the future. could hit that subscribe bell like see ya